morning, morning, morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Saturday. It is the 2022 version of April the 23rd. I think it's the 23rd, I'm pretty sure it is. But more important than the day or the date, it's game day! Oh, the air smells sweeter on game day mornings. The coffee tastes coffeeer and the energy is a little bit more impactful. What is Cracker Lacking? You're back here with me, Sean Butler, at the Spurs Talk Show. And you can find me at Spurs Talk Show on Instagram, at Spurs Talk Show on Twitter, at Spurs Talk Show on YouTube. And of course, remember, hashtag no spaces, hashtag all one word, because we don't want you finding San Antonio Spurs content. Who's subscriber count is still going up people still going up they haven't posted any content in four years yet their subscriber count is still going up what is going on thieves anyway you can also find me alongside do 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 danny kiriaku from tottenham on tour at we are tottenham tv today we're doing the watch along in the studio so this is going to be a quick video from me so I've got to get myself up North London on a Saturday. And you never know what the M25 traffic's gonna be like. I'm very excited about that. So if you are looking for somewhere other than Sky Sports to listen to the game as the game unfolds, then today, make sure you check out We Are Tottenham TV and come say hi. <sighs> Where was I? So. Massive day, huge day. We've got Man United going to the Emirates to play the scum, first and foremost. What sort of result do we want from that game? I'm not sure. We know we don't want an Arsenal win, but do we want a draw? Or do we want a Man United win? Let me know in the comments. I would say probably a draw is better. But I'll take a United win. But, you know, in all likelihood, the Man United are so bad at the moment. The only way you're going to get a decent result out of that game is if Arsenal come out even worse than Man United, which is possible. Or Man United, you know, have like a new manager bounce. Or but it's like a pre-new manager bounce because Ten Hag hasn't even taken over the reins the air there there yet but maybe because the players know he's coming in there'll be scouts and things there maybe maybe some of the Man United players who actually care about their future next season might want to put in a, a shift maybe just the energy of having signed Ten Hag around the club will will just bring a bit of positivity and a good performance from them who knows who knows we're not worried about them so much. We've spent, already spent too long talking about them. What we are worried about is Brentford. Are you worried about Brentford? Around the community, everyone is, you know, urging us to get a victory. I'm hearing the three nils, the four nils, the four ones, the two nils. But I think deep down, a lot of people are a little bit worried about this Brentford team playing against this particular Tottenham team. You know, how much did we really struggle against Brighton? Well, we struggled a lot. And why was that? Was it because we just had a bad day at the office? You know, we are four wins out of five. Um, or are we missing Matt Doherty that much? You know? Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Good and tight. So, I mean, I was at the game at Brighton and it was just awful just absolutely pitiful so i'm not particularly um over the moon with you know my confidence levels going into this game but i think that brighton and graham potter did do their homework and maximized their skill sets and their attributes to 
frustrate the life out of Tottenham on the whip by suffocating the midfield. And so, you know, can Brentford do the same thing? Bugsy, wait one second, guys. I'll come back to you. There's a car coming. Sorry about that. There was a car coming, and Bugsy was being Bugsy. So, look, in terms of the Brighton game, I'm not going to go over it too much. But I am just a little bit concerned by what the performance they put in. I don't know what happened. It was, I think that people saying that Harry Kane was jet lagged. I don't think it was that. I think he took a knock to his ankle in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game and he never shook it off. I don't know what the uh, excuses were for everybody else, but nobody came to the, to the party that day. And uh, consequently, we, uh, you know, threw away three points. A massive three points um, that uh, was a huge opportunity and uh, and one that could have already kind of put us in a in a much better position than we could argue arguably say we already are in you know I don't know if Tottenham really deserve top four if we don't win today at Brentford or if we don't beat the likes of Leicester next weekend but we have to figure out a way to to break down teams that that are just happy to give for us to have the ball like Brighton were. You know, Emerson Royale was woeful down the right. Regalon was woeful down the left. I do expect a different kind of performance today. Same team probably is going to be coming out apart from Sessegnon should be replacing Regalon because I hope that Sessegnon's now fit enough to start. And given Regalon's performance, I think that it's every he's got the right to, to drop uh, or to swap those two. Apart from that, it's going to be as you were though. So we just need... You know, we haven't really got a plan B, have we? We haven't got a formation plan B, and we haven't really got too many subs that can change the game. I would like to see Bergwijn come on earlier. You know, if Sonny's looking tired, or you know, even for an Emerson or whatever, if we need to do it earlier in the game, make the change. Don't give Bergwijn five minutes every time. It's insulting, disrespectful, and it's a waste because he's got enough in him to to, to change a game. We've seen that, and his confidence and form have been tip top so you know stop with this sentimentality of that managers have where you know because Sonny has got more clout more kudos than than Kulusevski the first substitution is always going to be Lucas Mora for Kulu and then you're going to give Son as much time as he can but then still give Bergwijn a few minutes just to say that you have it's it's silly like there's no meritocracy if that's the way that your 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 style of you know formation or tactical changes is based on it's not a meritocracy it's a popularity contest you know and i think that that's a really silly uh, message to send so anyway hopefully that won't be necessary today hopefully we're going to go and do do a job against the team they're a newly promoted team, I think, or was were Brentford in the Premier League last year? I'm not sure. But, you know, they're a decent outfit. They're a very tall team. I think they're the third highest team, third tallest team in England, I think, on average height at like six foot one and a quarter or six foot one and a half. Average height. You know, they've got a lot of Scandinavians in the team, which uh, are good in the air. They've got Tony up front, who's you know, banging in 13, 14 Premier League goals, um, a goal every other game, give or take. For a team that's mid-table, or bottom half of the table, it's a really good return. He's a very dangerous player, so we have to be careful of him. And we have to be careful from the set pieces. Obviously, Christian Eriksen is looking like a, you know, back to his best kind of player. And he's not gonna do us any favors today, is he? So, you know, even though, he might be playing in a Tottenham shirt again next season. Right now he's playing for, Bright, uh, for Brentford and he you know, should, should approach the game as if it was any other. He'll also probably have some sort of insights that he can give the Brentford team on some of the Tottenham players, which you know, isn't going to help us. And obviously if you've already got a tall team, with him whipping the ball in, with his accuracy uh, from set pieces, and a team that defend, is defending them that is traditionally very vulnerable from set pieces because we haven't got a very tall team. And 
if we do concede, we do usually concede aerially, or at least we give away a lot more chances that in that kind of style. So, you know, I think that they're gonna, it would be mad of them not to pepper the ball into the box, pepper the box with the ball. Long throws from that guy, Pillot. Uh, if he's playing, I know he came off injured in his last game, so. Bugsy, here, Bubba, here. So, uh, um, for me, it's one of those, one of those games that could go either way. It could be a, could be a real, could be a really good game. Both teams usually score. Both teams usually concede. So expect plus three goals, plus three and a half goals. If you're a betting man, that's where I'd go with today. And just hope for the best that Tottenham can figure out a way to uh, to break them down, hopefully break them down, get the early goal in the first half and settle everyone's nerves. That should go according to plan if we're willing to go direct like we were against Aston Villa. If times are hard, don't be afraid to go direct. We just need to hope that the guys up the front, Harry Kane, you know, is fully fit and raring to go and Sonny's on tip-top form. You know, all things you couldn't say about the game against Brighton, but against Brentford, you know, I think now it's, uh, it's now or never for Tottenham, isn't it? You know, it's like one of those moments where Today is such a massive day for us, such a massive day for the top four race. I'm very privileged to be going to the We Are Tottenham TV studio shortly, so I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. We've been talking for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. Like, share and subscribe. Do let me know what you think, what your thoughts would be on, on how we should uh, approach, uh, approach Brentford today. Would you go long if necessary? Do you think we can go down the wings again or do you think we can play it through the middle with Benson, Core and Hoiberg? Looking to link up with Harry Kane. Harry Kane dropping deep. Do you want to see Sessignon on the left? Do you want to see Regulon on the left? Do you want to see Bergwijn play right wing back or even Kulisevsky or Lucas Moura instead of Emerson? Or do you have confidence that Emerson Royale can do the business when push comes to shove? Let me know in the comments. I love you all. Thanks for stopping by. As always, guys, as always, bye-bye.